The strategy of the enemy is to make you think that you missed something that God promised. But the truth of the matter is, whatever God promises, he got to perform. Whatever he says, become it just because he said it. If it's not it before he says it, it has to become it just because he said it. Before God would allow you to miss a promise, he would do a miracle on the spot. You came all the way here this morning for me to tell you that the thing that God has promised you, he has not forgotten you. It may have a little dirt on it, but you got to learn how to redig your wells. One, in the name of God, our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, we welcome you to the Noonday Bible Study at the Olivet Baptist Church, where Bishop Kevin L. Adams Sr. is our senior pastor teacher, and we are so delighted to have you to be here with you with us. And for those of you that are online, we are grateful to you for joining us, and we want to invite you to get your Bibles, and to go with us as we study the Word of God. The Word of God is what we need for our guidance in everyday life, how we need to make decisions, how we need to do what we need to do, fulfill the purpose that God has given us. The Word of God is so crucial to us, and we thank God that even as we study His Word, we're never alone, for the Holy Spirit is our master teacher and opens up and reveals to us so that we can understand what God is saying to us. And then after understanding and learning the word of God, then we want to be able to live the word of God. Because the basic thing is the word of God will change us if we allow it to do that. It will work on our hearts. It will work on our minds. It will change us into all that God has created us to be. So with that in mind, we are going to open in prayer and we're going to study God's word. Is that okay with everybody? Can we study God's word today? All right. All right. And by the way, I'm Elder Bramlett, and I will be your teacher for this afternoon as we study together. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, and we thank you so much, Lord God, for this opportunity to study your word. We thank you for your word, for we realize that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We thank you that your word is living and it is quick and it even cuts us, Lord. Your word shows us where we're wrong. It shows us where we're right. It shows us who we are in you. It shows us how we need to change, Lord God, to be all that you would have us to be. Now, we pray that you will speak to you through your word today. Speak to our hearts and we have ears to hear so we can hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to us. And we will not just be hearers of your word today, Lord. We will be doers indeed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So good to see everyone here again. And let me ask you a question. If I were to ask you, who are you? Who are you? And then do you know who you are? And you would say, Elder Bramlett, that is a silly question. I know who I am, and you may say who your parents were. You may say who your children are. You may say where you work or where you retired from, like some of us were able to do. If I were to ask you who you are, you would give me descriptions, but do, do you really, do we really truly know who we are? I'm not talking about the physical even. We, we may say, okay, uh, uh, I'm five two and weigh blah 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 many pounds. We're not gonna say that. Uh, that I wear my hair short. I wear my hair long. Uh, that I went to such and such school. I'm from such and such place. But that is truly, really not who we are. So we ask the question today: Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? In today's world, in today's society, in today's time there's something called identity crisis. And lots of people suffer from identity crisis. They don't really know who they are. They're confused about who they are. And sad to say, 
there are many of us who name the name of Christ, who call ourselves Christians and come to church and we come to church regularly. But do we really know who we are? Are we suffering from an identity crisis ourselves? So do we know who we are? And as a result of not knowing who we are, as a result of having an identity crisis, then as a result of that, many people just take on what they see going on around them. You got to have the latest clothes and the fashions that everybody else is wearing. Don't matter that it don't fit. Don't matter that you got a shape not made for it. Don't matter that you're a certain amount of years and you want to look more like a reserved woman, then we want to buy all of the cars that everybody else has. Doesn't matter that we don't have the money to pay for them. And you know the popo man will come back and get your car when you when you can't pay for your car. We, we, want, we, we have an identity crisis, so we're trying to be like somebody else. We're trying to identify, we're trying to say who we are. And we think that things, the way we look, the way we talk, what we have, who our friends are, who our associates are, we think that determines our identity as to who we are. But we have to be very careful doing that because when we begin to do those kinds of things, they can be very detrimental to us. They can be harmful to us. And most of all, they can keep us from having the good life that God wants us to have. How many of you know that God wants us to have a good life? Yes, indeed. God wants us to have a good life. So what is identity crisis anyway? It's an uncertainty. It's being confused as to who you, the person is, and it leads to insecurity and unstableness. You know anybody that suffers from that? Yeah, yeah, we're going to pray for them. Our identity, if we are in Christ, if we are part of the body of Christ, our identity is that first of all, we belong to God. We are people of God. So since we are the people of God, we do show the love of God to other people in the world. Can people tell who we are by how we act and how we treat people? I'm not saying that you, just because you have a cross hanging around your neck or you got a bumper sticker that says Jesus saves, it doesn't matter about all of that, but then the bottom line is that determines our identity. Are we really a child of God is, is, is determined really by the fact of, are we showing forth God's love? If God is living in us, then we can see God's attributes in ourselves, love, kindness, forgiveness, gentleness. We can see all of those things there. So, we want to look at today, and we're going to look at Ephesians. If you would turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 2, and we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 10, and we're going to study through God's Word to say, to find out who we are. And we want to be assured, we want to be assured of who we are in Christ. Now, if you never received Jesus as your Savior, if you never confessed with your mouth, uh, the Lord Jesus and believed in your heart that God has raised, had raised him from the dead, then we need to have another conversation because you, we need to go back further even than where we are now. But those of us that say we are a Christian, those of us that say we are the body of Christ, those of us that say we belong to the Lord, then we want to look at some things. We want to look at some things because ultimately God has, he has something for us to do. He has something for each one of us to do. So the first thing we want to know, and, and if you notice, I have left some blanks there on your sheets for you to fill in, and I would take them up afterwards to see if you fill them in to see if you're paying attention, but I'm not going to do that. We're going to just do, we're just going to study the, that, and you can go back and review that. So the first thing we want to look at is to know who you are, you got to know who you were. Because all of us were somebody else or something else before we are who we are now in Christ. Is that right? Okay, amen. We all were, we all were that. So look at Ephesians chapter 2, and we're going to look at verses 1 through 3. And I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. And God's word reads thus. 
and you he made alive. Now, who is the he here? Who is the he? Who? God. Okay, so, and you, and you, God made alive. Now, who are the yous? Who's he talking to? Us. He's talking to us. He says, God made you alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. So, who were we? We were the living dead. And that's, that's, that's the first blank that you have. You know, I, I, don't, I don't watch that show called Walking Dead. Do y'all watch that? Because it's just too, to me, it's just too. But these people walk, they do things, they talk, they do all kinds of stuff. But guess what? They don't have any life in them. They are dead. So what the Apostle Paul is telling us in Ephesians that at one time, we were the living dead. We were the walking dead. We were dead in our trespasses and sins. Anybody know what trespasses are? Got a definition for trespasses? What do you do? What do you see signs say on people's property? No trespassing. No, don't go trespassing. No trespassing. Trespassing means that you step over the boundary or limit that you have. When we were dead in our sins and trespasses, we stepped over what God said was right. What God's word said was what we are to do. When we trespass, we stepped over it. But what would you expect of that? We were dead. Is that right? We were right. You, 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 we were dead in our trespasses and sins. What is sin? It not obeying any, yes. Uh -huh. Not obeying God. Anything contrary to what God says to do or God says to be is sin. Is sin. So we were dead in our sins. Look at verse one, verse one again of Ephesians chapter two. We were dead in our trespasses. We stepped over. We went past what God told us to do. We had sins because we didn't obey him. Now, just a side thing. It's not a side thing. It's, it's really important. What caused us to do these things? What kind of nature did we have? We had the human nature. We had the sin nature. Were all of us born with the sin nature in us? Yes, we were because of Adam. Because we, 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 Adam was our father there. And when he, he, he was the father, he's the father of sin. And so it was passed down to everybody else. So the nature of sin is in us. When we say the nature of sin is in us, what does that mean in everyday life? If a person has the nature of sin. Well, they're not following God. Not following God. Right, right. Do they have a choice? Do you have a choice if you got the nature of sin? If you got the nature of sin in you, you got the can't help it. Whatever your nature is, is what you're going to do. That's why we have to be born again. We have to be born of the spirit because we have that nature, that nature. Have you ever noticed that with, with, with little, little bitty children, little bitty when they little bitty, you have a notice that you don't have to teach them to lie. And we say, oh, they're so cute. I know my great-grandchildren, they are the cutest babies in the whole wide world. I tell you that, it's the truth, y'all. It's just the truth. And I love them. But you know what? They are rough. You don't have to teach a child to lie. You'll say, did you bother that? Mm-mm. They got stuff all around their mouth. Well, they bothered it. You know why? Because that nature is in them. We were born in sin and shaping in iniquity we were born in that so so that was that was that sin nature was in all of us would you agree sin nature was in all of us so we were dead in our sins and trespasses go back and look at the scripture in which you once walked now that word walk doesn't mean just taking steps it means that's how we lived that's how we lived According to the what? Course of this world, according to the 
prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. So first of all, we walk or lived according to what? The world. The world. Does, does, are, are we not told in uh, Romans chapter 12 when we're told to uh, present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is our reasonable act of worship? And then that's verse 1. Verse 2 tells us, and do not be conformed to the world. That means don't go along with the world, but be transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. How can we renew our mind? Good way is the word of God. And when you study the word, you read the word of God, you study the word of God, but you can't stop there. You got to do what it says. You got to do what it says. And we don't even have to worry about, well, I just can't do that. That's too much because he's, the Lord has given us the Holy Spirit that helps us and enables us to do what he calls us to do. So who were we before? We were dead in our trespasses and sins. We live according to the world. Unfortunately, sometimes church folk live like the world now. Do we not? Do we not? But the Bible clearly tells us not to, to be conformed, not to go along with the world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We are to be a peculiar people. We, we don't look like the world looks. We don't do what the world looks. We don't think like the world looks. We don't act like the world acts. Also, it says that, that we, what we were is we walked according to the world. We walked or lived according to the prince of the power of the air. Who is that? Satan. We lived, we lived according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience. What's going to happen to the sons of disobedience? They're going to receive the wrath of God if they do not repent and receive Jesus Christ as their savior and walk in the ways of the Lord, then that is, that is their, they will, they will receive the wrath of God. Now, did you notice that it says we were all of that? And you say, I wasn't that bad. I didn't do that much. Uh-huh. I, I, I did not, I didn't do what they did. Oh, say that again loud. Sin has no degree. Sin is sin. Is that right? Sin is sin. It's sin. And when we realize this is who we were. We were, you may not have done what I did. I may not have done what you did. But all of us, we have sinned and come short of the glory of of God. Is that right? That's right. That's right. Now, uh, uh, look at, look at verse three, look at verse three. It says among whom, and, and when it says among whom it's referring back to the world and the prince of the power of the air and the spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience. It tells us we all, does your Bible say all, does your Bible say just some people, uh, them people, those folk over there know the Bible says in whom among whom we all once conducted ourselves. And how do we conduct ourselves in what? Uh, conversation or what? Mm -hmm. well, uh, did we conduct ourselves in the lust of the flesh? In what felt good? Yes. And of the mind and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others there. We, we talked about the children of wrath there. Um, we could, we could, we could walk and talk and think, but guess what? We had no life. That's the blank there. We had no life. We can walk and we can, we could talk and we could think, but because we didn't have the spirit of God in us, we had no real, genuine, true life because it is in Jesus Christ that we have life and have it more abundantly because the scripture tells us that that the that that satan came the enemy came to steal to kill and to destroy but jesus said but i have come that you can have what 
life and life more abundantly. Now, it's just a, it's a difference in existing and having life. You can have all the money in the world. You can have the softest bed in the world. All your bills can be paid. You can have a beautiful home. You can, you can think you look beautiful. All of that, but if you do not have Jesus Christ in your life, you are a poor, pitiful person. And the only way that we can truly have life is in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. So we were, what were we? We were spiritually dead and could not respond to the spirit or the things of God. When you're spiritually dead, and we, we say sometimes, you know, you, we may be trying to talk to someone to receive Jesus as a, as a personal savior or talking to them about coming out the world and, and being a better person and do better, and they just cannot get it. You ever talk to somebody like that? But they cannot, they cannot get it because they, can't, they don't have, the, their spirit has not been quickened. That's why even though we witness to people, we talk to people, we preach to people, we receive people in the church, unless Jesus touches a heart, that person's not going to be drawn to Jesus. And, and can I just be frank with you? Everybody says, Lord, Lord, will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. In other words, everybody talking about heaven ain't going there. Everybody talking about heaven ain't going there, there, there. And it's not that we're judging or deciding who goes or not because that's up to God. But the word also tells us that you will know them by the what? By the fruit they bear. You will know them by the fruit they bear. So, so we were that way. We were spiritually dead. We, we could not respond to the spirit. We could not respond to God. We may have looked good, had money, things. We may have knew, known a lot, but, the, but we were, had no real, true, genuine life, which is in Christ. We conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh and the mind. We did what made us feel good and think well of ourselves. Can you remember a day when you did that? When you did what made you feel good and think well of yourself? Yeah, y'all don't have to tell. I'll tell. I did. And it's, it's not just about, oh, those things that the other folk do. It's those things like eating, what well, we don't have no business eating. But it just makes me feel so good getting that comfort food. wonder why they call that comfort food. Because it, it oftentimes can lead to you being very uncomfortable when you expand, expand, expand. So what we want to understand is that we were in this shape. So we have compassion and care for other people that have not yet received Jesus as their Savior. We did what made us feel good. That's, a, that's one of the blanks. And think well of ourselves. By nature, we too were children of wrath. We did not have would, those uh, who, had, who would receive the wrath of God because they have rejected Jesus Christ. So do you, you, do you understand who we were? We were in a pitiful shape, weren't we? Okay, so let me ask you this. What happened? What happened? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 7. First two words there are phenomenal. It says, but God. Amen. Don't you like the but gods? You can have a whole stream of other stuff that's a mess. But when it says, but God, you know something good and positive has happened. Yeah, he, that's right. That is it. Absolutely. Absolutely. But God, you know, despite all of this mess of what we were, but God. But God, who is rich in what? Mercy, compassionate. He's compassionate. Because, and it was because of what? His great love with which he loved us. You know something interesting about God? He didn't wait for us to be saved to love us. He loved us even while we were yet sinners. 
while we were yet in our midst, while we were yet doing anything we wanted to do, and, and while we were yet thinking, and sometimes doing, actually doing stuff, isn't it? Sometimes it's the thoughts. You ever, you ever, something ever popped in your mind and you think, well, where did that come from? You know, that's not of God. That's why God tells us to take every thought captive unto the obedience of God. So, so, but God, he didn't wait for us to get cleaned up. He didn't, he didn't wait for us to stop doing stuff. He loved us even when we were in our mess. He loved us enough that he didn't leave us in our mess. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even, even when we were dead in our trespasses, what did he do? Quickened us. What does quicken us mean? He made us alive. Mm -hmm. He made us alive together with Christ, for by grace you have been saved. So can you, can you say with me, say, God did it. God did it. Yes, he did. God did it. God did it. God did it. Before we believed and received Jesus, we were dead. That's another blank. We were dead in our spirit to God. We were blind to the ways of God. We were unable to communicate with God. And how's the main way we communicate with God? Through prayer. Through prayer. Only prayer we could pray to God then was, Lord, save me that he would honor there. And God was merciful and he, he kept a lot of stuff away from us and even gave us some good things even while we were yet in that way. So we were blind to the ways of God. We couldn't communicate. We couldn't, we couldn't communicate with God because there was a wall there. What was that wall? It was sin. We were sinners. We were on this side of the wall. God is holy. He was on this side of the wall. God being holy has nothing to do with sin, so we were away from each other. We couldn't communicate. We couldn't communicate with him. We were eternally separated from God, and it was because of our sinful nature. We couldn't change. That's another blank. We couldn't change any of this by trying to do good. We couldn't change nothing, none of that. Not the state we were in no matter how much good we tried to do, not, we were still in that sinful state. But if you notice, we were made alive in Christ. The only way to change our dead condition we were in is a new spirit and a new life. Would you agree with that? And those of you that may be listening, put, it, put in the comments, uh, to change, you need a new spirit and a new life. Can't have that same old, old spirit. And that same old life. Christ gives us a gift, this gift. Another blank. Christ gives us this blank, this gift. When? When do we receive this gift? He that's it. When we believe in him as our Savior. So God did it. We are alive in Christ. And there's a reason. It's a reason there. It's a reason that and, and that reason is to show. That reason is to show. All right, look at verse number, uh, look at verse number seven. Well, let's, let's, let's cover verse uh, five also. We, we said that, but, but God who was rich in mercy because of his great love for us while we were dead in our trespasses and sins, he made us alive. And he did what? In verse six, he raised us up together and made us to do what? sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Do you know right now that even though we're here, that we're sitting in heavenly places in the spirit? So we can look at things from a heavenly perspective. We don't look at things like other people do down here. We look at them from a heavenly perspective, which is God's perspective. Look at verse number seven. It says that when in ages to come, that's the future, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Jesus Christ. So what did he show? What he was going to show would be in the future. He's showing great riches of God's grace. That's one of the blanks. Okay, so what is grace? It's unmerited favor. 
Grace is unmerited, undeserved favor. We got the goodness of God that we didn't deserve. Grace is God's undeserved goodness towards us. It's based on only the work of Christ. We didn't do anything to get it. All we did was believe and receive. We received the free gift. We didn't do anything. We didn't work to do anything for it. That's why when people tell you, when I get myself straight or when I get myself cleaned up, I'm going to come to the Lord. I'm going to start coming to church. You tell them, you can't do it. You better do it now and let him clean you up because you can't do it yourself. And tomorrow is not promised to anybody. You notice even this evening, 30 minutes from now, right now, not promised to anybody there. Okay, so we have seen who we were. We have seen what happened. What happened to make us make a change? Then we want to look at how it happened. Look at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Great, 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 great salvation scripture. For it is by what? Grace. And what is grace? Unmerited favor, something we don't deserve. The, it's the good we don't deserve. Because there's mercy also. Mercy is us not getting what we deserve, which is that bad. Some, that, that's, that's God keeping back that. But the grace is the good we don't deserve. Are you going to say something, sister? You're just waving at me. Hey, <laughs> for by grace, unmerited favor, we didn't do anything for it. You have been saved through faith. What does save mean? Any idea what save have to do with? Well, we were dead. And we were on our way to an eternal damnation, eternal death. Because if you're not saved, not only will you not have the blessings of God here, but there's coming a day when you'll receive eternal damnation. And can I tell you something? That's a real thing. It, it, it's, a very, it's a very real thing. Read, read, read your Bible. You'll see that it's a, a very real thing. So how did it happen? How, how did this salvation, how did this, this change from being dead to coming alive, how did it happen? It wasn't because of our actions not because of any good that we have done. In fact, it's nothing we did. That's another blank. Nothing we did. Salvation, deliverance, freedom, all of those are free gifts from God. We receive them by faith through, by grace through faith. And you know what? It's a gift that's freely given to us. It's not in exchange for anything you do. God didn't say, okay, you do good. I'm going to give you grace. I'm going to give you salvation. Uh-uh. We never would have got it then. It's completely secure, which means you cannot lose your salvation. Once God saved you, if you've truly been saved, you cannot lose your, your salvation. I don't. Does that mean we're going to do everything right all the time? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. But all of our sins, past, present, and future, have been covered by the blood of Jesus. Now, they, that, that, there will be some, some things that when, when we are disobedient to God, when we have walked contrary to his ways, there are some things that we're going to suffer for that. But we, our salvation will not be taken away. Has, has, has God ever given you a whooping? And you knew it was God giving you a whooping. Yeah, yeah. God, whoop, but he whoops us because he loves us, these children. Y'all remember when you were growing up, your mama or your grandmama or your auntie or whatever there, they would whip you sometimes, and you, they say, I'm whipping you because I love you. I remember I told my mother one time, I just wish you didn't love me so much. So she gave, gave me another lick there. She said, because I love you and I want the best for you. God loves us and he wants the best for us. Sometimes that means that he will chastise us. For what loving parent doesn't chastise? You got your hand up, sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you ever figure that out? <laughs> when you started saying it. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Being presumptuous, being presumptuous, presumptuous, my God. Uh huh, uh huh. That's right, that's right, that's right, mm-hmm. that's right, absolutely, absolutely. So, that said that. But you know what I've learned? There's no age on knowing God's word and God's way. Because some things that I've heard some older people say, if you go to the scripture, it's not there. It, 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 uh-huh, it's just, it's, it's just, it's not there. And she probably truly believed it because we, we're told God forgives all of our sins past, present, and future, but if you willingly sin, if you willingly sin, is there forgiveness for that? Uh-huh. And even, even if God does forgive you for that, you're going to get chastised. You're, you're going to get chastised for it. Okay. For um, with completely secure, we cannot lose our salvation. Salvation and faith are gifts from God. Did you know even for us to believe to receive Jesus Christ, that's a gift from God. It's not, it's, it's all God. It's God, God. All we have to do is surrender ourselves to him. Not my will, Lord God, but your will be done. So in, in Ephesians chapter two, again, it says, by grace, you have been saved through faith and not that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Verse nine says, it's not of works, lest any man should boast. Our salvation is no reason for us to boast or brag. I'm saved. Yeah, I'm saved. I did it. No. But by the grace of God, you would st- we would still be lost in our sins. Our salvation showed the great love. That's another blank. It shows the great love and grace of God alone. God blesses us because of his goodness and not because we deserve it. Can I say that again? God blesses us because he's good and it's not based on our, it's not based on our goodness. Not, it's not a result of the efforts we make or the ability or intelligent choices, the acts of service. You can do good. Gratitude and not bragging or boasting is our response. Since it's by grace that we say we're saved, I'm not going to brag and boast that I'm, I'm saved. Look what I did. I gave my life to Christ. Okay, you received him as Savior there, but it's not for boasting. It should be gratitude that leads us to help and serve others. Is that what Jesus did in the kingdom? And he wants us to have same have the love that that he had. And so out of gratitude to what he did for us, then we're going to help and love others. God intends our free gift of salvation to result in acts of service to others. And we have to ask ourselves, what have I done for anybody else lately? How have I helped somebody else? Or is it all about me? So the bottom line is who we are. Who we are. Look at verse number 10 of Ephesians chapter 2. And it tells us, for we are God's or his what? Workmanship. Ship. Some uh, translations say we are his masterpiece or we are his work of art. We are his workmanship. Ship. And you know when, when, when there's a, a sculpture or someone's painting or whatever there and, they're, 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 and it comes up and it's a masterpiece, it's so beautiful and all of that, then that person has created it. But God says that We are, he created us. And how did he create us? Look at verse number 10. It tells us, how were we created? In Christ Jesus. God created us in Christ Jesus. And he created us for what reason? 
for good works. We were, we were created for good works. God, would you agree with me on this? God knows us better than anyone else, even ourselves. That's another blank. Do you not believe God knows you better than anybody? Even yourself. And sometimes I ask myself, now, why did I do that? What made me do that? But God knows. He knows. He knows, he knows me. He knows you. He knows our strengths. He knows our weaknesses. He knows all. And yet he accepts us and he loves us. God knows what he created us to be. Do you know that every one of us got, that, that God created in Christ Jesus, he created for a purpose? He created us for a definite purpose. He knows what he created us to be, and he, knew, he, he knows all the great things he does through, he, through us. He already knows that. Whatever, God, whatever purpose God has for us, we may not know, but we can, we can ask him because he knows. God, God why, why, what am I to be doing now? What would you have me to do now? And, 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 you, and what are you, in this season of my life, what would you have me to do? Because you do know we have different seasons in our life, just like the seasons out there we do them. And what, what God tells you to do one time, he may not have you do that from now on. But if, if uh, anybody like me, sometimes I go to God and I say, God, what am I to do? What would you have me to do? And you know what he says to me? You didn't do the last thing I told you for, yet. Go back and do the last thing I told you. God ever tell talk to you like that? Do the last thing I told you and then come back and I got something else for you. But you need to go back and do the last thing I told you. God knows us better than anybody. He created us to be and to, and to do things, to do great things for him. He has purpose for our life, but it's only as we surrender ourselves to him. Now, we've, we're saved. We receive Jesus Christ as our Savior. We have salvation, but daily we have to surrender to God. Not my will, but your will be done. Lord, I want to bless her out because she came at me the wrong way. Lord, you know you see everything and you know everything. You know they're wrong, Lord. But God says, not my, your will but my will. What did Jesus do when he was beaten, hung, bled, and died? He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. He was so keen in on what the, God, what the purpose that the Father had for him that all this other stuff was nothing. We got to have the mind of Christ who humbled himself to the point of death, even death on the cross, so that a lot of other stuff, because I'm going to tell y'all something. The enemy is real. He's a spirit and he's real. And he wants to get us distracted and off track. Now, he knows he's a defeated foe. He knows he don't win in the end. And he knows his time is probably short. So he says, I, I'm, I'm just going to get him while I can. So we have to have our mind stayed on Jesus and say, Lord, what would you have me to do? so that we can be about our father's business. We are God's workmanship. We are his work of art. We are his masterpiece. And we got value and worth. Don't let anybody ever tell you that you ain't nothing. Because we belong, we are a child of God. We have value and we have worth. So therefore, we treat ourselves and we treat others with respect. Because we are God's work of art. Why would I disrespect another work of art? God designs us for a specific purpose. If we don't know what that purpose is, ask God. He'll tell you. We can't do it on our own. We can't achieve that purpose on our own. But by abiding in God, it leads us to complete all that he has for us to do. God made us for Good works. He made us for good works. And if you notice in Ephesians 2, 9, it says, which God prepared when? Beforehand, so that we would walk or live in them. God knows what we are, so we follow God's guidance there. So what's the conclusion? To know who we are, first of all, we got to know who we were. We got to know where we came from. Who were we? 
We were sinners dead in our sins and trespasses. We came from that old life. Then we got to know the one who brought about the change. If you don't know who, who brought about the change, you got to know that before you can move forward. It was only God. It was but God who is rich in mercy. Even while we were yet dead in our sins and trespasses, he made us alive. He quickened us. He made us alive and he made us for a purpose to do all that he has called us to do. So understand and remember, who are we? We're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are God's work of art. We're his masterpiece. We are valuable. We have a purpose. We are redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We have been given, forgiven of all our sins, past, present, and future. We are justified. We are now part of the body of Christ. We are now, we are God's children now. We are somebody. So if anybody asks you who you are, what are you going to say? Child of God. And when you say that, I'm a child of God, do you know what that entails? God's want his children to represent him well. So we look like him. So when people see, see us, they know him. So as a life applica application, this is what I'm going to ask you to do next week. Speak by affirming who you are in Christ. Go back to the scripture. I am redeemed. I'm justified. Yes, I am. I'm valuable. I belong to God. God chose me. He's my father. Speak those affirmations in Christ. Because sometimes you can begin to feel down. You know that. And then speak by affirmation what you can do in Christ. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Yes, I'm the head and not the tail. My father is rich in houses and land. He has everything so that I am a I am an heir and joint heir with Jesus Christ. And it's not about just material things. Whatever God gave Jesus, I'm a joint heir with Jesus. So he gives it to me. And then ask God to show you his purpose for your life now. Lord, what would you have me to do now? Where do you want me to be now? What should I be doing now? And don't say, well, you know, I don't fool with those folk. Let them, ha let them have it. Let them do it. No. What's my part, God? You want me to pray? You want me to speak the truth in love? You want me to speak to that person that's downtrodden? What would you have me to do? What time is it, somebody? Somebody tell me what time it is. 12 what? 10, 10 to 1. Oh, that's good. Y'all were looking at me like, she going to be up there all day? <laughs> Glory to God. Question. Anyone have a question or comment? Did you receive something today? Did you receive something today? Let's give glory to God. All glory and honor and all praise goes to God. Yes. He wants us to know who we are because you can get, you can get caught up in there's so many things that the world has out there. You ever look at commercials here lately? I, I'm, I'm, I just don't. I used to not watch them because I wanted it to go back to what I was watching. But now I probably don't need to watch the commercials or what I was watching. Because the commercials always have, you know, it's, it's always enticing you to buy something or do something. Or, or to act like something or look like something that's just, just not, not of God. Nobody has a question to ask me. Uh huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. and when that head coach of South Carolina is here, the first thing that I want to put it up is acknowledge my Lord and Savior. Ah. <laughs> he said that, I went right in. I began to praise God. Mm -hmm. And he had a whole, there was a big crowd ever. I think 18 million or something like that. And she gave God. Amen. Amen. Uh-huh. Now God is probably that same. And I just want to give him praise. And I just thought, Amen. So a little thing or a big thing. 
that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is it. That's it. No, okay. Mm-hmm. It's right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that is it. And we are we are accountable. We we are accountable. Uh, now we're all going to stand before the judgment seat of, of of God. Now those of us that are saved, we're not going to lose our salvation, but we can lose rewards because we didn't do what we could do or what God had us to do with what he gave us. And the thing about it is whatever, whatever it is that God gives us to do, we don't just have to try to do it ourselves. He gives us the Holy Spirit that works through us. So yeah, y'all remember that song that says that he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own. He's always there. He's always there and dependable always there and dependable. I don't care if it's in the morning, the afternoon, or late in the midnight hour. He's always there. And we want to be like Jesus Christ and have his mind as it tells us over in Philippians. I believe it's chapter 2 that tells, says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus that humbled himself. We have to learn to humble ourselves. We don't have to be the big, the big cheese. But to humble ourselves, as Jesus did, even to the point of death, death on the cross. But look what happened when Jesus humbled himself. The scripture says, therefore, God has highly exalted him, that at the name of Jesus, every knee would bow and every tongue should confess. I'm going to tell you something. If we as believers in Christ would ever learn that we, we, we can humble, we can be the humble ones. And if we humble ourselves, God will lift us up in due time, in due time. But we often say, they don't know who I am. I've been in church all my life. I as a pastor, I as a pastor's wife, I've been, a, I've been a, a, a deacon, a deaconess, I've been an usher, I've been all of this, and uh-uh, you, you, you telling me what to do? Humble ourselves. Humble ourselves. In due time, God will exalt us in due time. That's it. And that's it. Now, that. Are we always going to get it right? That's it. Even though we have been made alive and we have brought, we are now dead to sin and trespasses, we still live in this flesh. And there are times that we're going to mess up. But when we mess up, what do we do? Repent. First John 1 9 says, if you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive. And not only does he forgive, but he cleanses us. He washes us from all unrighteousness. So if you mess up, don't give up. As confess, repent, and God will do the cleansing and the cleaning. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Father, we just thank you so much for your loving kindness. And we thank you for the word that you have given us today, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that no matter where we came from, all of us having the sin nature, Lord, we thank you that now we are alive in you, that we are saved, we are delivered, we're forgiven, we're redeemed, we're justified, we've been reconciled to you, Lord God. And Lord, for that, we are so grateful. We thank you and we realize it, that it was not, wasn't of us, but it was a free gift from you. So in gratitude to you, Lord, we're going to live lives that show others the love of God. We're going to do what you would have us to do, Lord God. We're going to love the unlovable. Unlove Some people are just hard to love. We're going to love those just like you did, Lord. Father, we're going to forgive. Even those that uh, sin against us, we are going to forgive. For that's what you did, Lord. Father, we want to be all that you have called us to do, and we want you to get glory out of all what we do, what we say, even what we think. To you be the glory, God, for the great things that you have done. 
It is in Jesus' mighty name that we do pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Praise God. And we invite you to give uh, there. Those of you that are watching online, there are a couple of ways you can give. Uh, you can give uh, online. You can give text it to give. You can mail it in. Uh huh. Or you can go to the website and give. And those of you that are here, we appreciate you giving. For God loves a cheerful giver. And we can't outgive God, for he always gives us much more than we give him. God bless you. God keep you. We uh, continue to pray for Bishop. Lord, we pray for our Bishop right now in the name of Jesus. We pray for his strength, Lord God. We pray that you would continue to use him for your glory, God. Thank you for his life. Thank you for his teaching. Thank you for his preaching, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, that we are able to sit under such a man as that. This. So, Father, we bless your name, honor you, and praise you for Bishop. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Good evening, good afternoon, and we will see you uh, on worship if the Lord says the same. <laughs>